Howdy. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to do integration by parts. Now, how many of y'all love integration by parts? Well, um, chances are, if you're watching this, it's probably because it's really confusing and it's really difficult and it's really long. And it's just, I, I get frustrated with the way that it's traditionally taught. What I'm going to do by the end of this video, my goal is for y'all to be perfect at integration by parts and it's going to be really easy. I promise. This uh, 5 to 10 minute problem, I'm going to be able to show you how to do in 30 seconds. Now, in order to appreciate the way that I'm about to show you, what I want to do first, you don't have to follow along here, is I'm going to try to do this problem traditionally literally as fast as I can. I'm still going to teach it. I'm still going to show and explain every step, but <laughs> it's going to be a lot. All right. So what I'm going to try to do if y'all can try to keep up, that'd be that'd be really cool, uh, and that'd be really impressive. But I'm gonna do this problem as fast as I can traditionally. Okay, you don't have to write this down because that's not the way I like to do it. But if you want to pay attention and learn, by all means, do it. Okay, so with x squared e to the three x, uh, what we need to do is find a u and dv, and then we're gonna plug it into this formula. And when I plug it into that formula, I'll solve from there. You ready? Okay, and take a deep breath. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set u equal to x squared. That means my dv will be e to the 3x. And so du, the derivative, is 2x, which means v, the integral, is 1 third e to the 3x. And so plug into that formula, u times v, that's going to be 1 third x squared e to the 3x minus the integral. v times du, that's 2 over 3x e to the 3x dx. But dang, notice we have to do integration by parts again. So in this case, I'm going to set my u equal to 2 thirds x. That means my dv is e to the 3x. And so du is 2 thirds. That means that v is equal to 1 third e to the 3x. And so still remembering that 1 third x squared e 3x is still part of my final answer minus remember you're minusing everything so u times v that's going to be 2 over 9x e 3x minus the integral v times du that's going to be 1 9th e 3x dx and oh finally now i can finally integrate this so your final answer is going to be 1 third x squared e to the 3x distributing this negative into both minus 2 over 9x e to the 3x and then remember that's going to be positive and then integrating that that's 1 over 27 e 3x plus c and that's integration of parts, and that's why it's so frustrating. Here's the way I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm just going to do it, and then I'll teach you how to do it. So we said that what u is x squared, right? And dv was e to the 3x. Check this. I'm going to take the derivative, 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 integral, 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 and bang, 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 multiply down, and your final answer, multiplying down and across, one third x squared, e to the three x, multiplying down here, minus two over nine x, e three x, multiplying down here, plus two over 27, e three x, plus c. And this is the way I'm gonna show you how to do it. And here's the thing is, a lot of professors don't like this method because they're like, oh, it doesn't work for everyone. Oh, yes, it does. <laughs> I promise. I'm going to show you how it's going to work for every type of scenario. Now, before I show you how to, it's going to work for every type of scenario, I want to show you how I dealt with this chart and how I actually used this chart. What you're going to do is you're going to set your U on the left side, and I'll tell you what to set your U every single time. And I'm going to set the DV on the right side. Now, you're going to take the derivative of the left side however many times I tell you to. And so in this case, say we take the derivative twice, and you're going to integrate the right side however many times you took the derivative. The last thing you're going to do is start with a positive in the upper left-hand corner, alternate signs all the way down, multiply down and to the right, and when I get to the bottom, you're going to multiply across and put an integral sign. The reason I ignored that in this case is because when I do multiply across the bottom, zero times anything is just zero. So I was able to ignore it, but we can't ignore that every time. But this is how we're going to use the chart, okay? And I promise it works every time. So let's go through every scenario. Okay. So there are three separate groups that I like to put integration of parts. Let's put this right here. So there's three separate groups, and the first one is going to be an x to the n e to the x, or an x to the n times a trig. What I recommend real quickly, pause the video, jot this down, that way we can kind of talk about it and learn about it. Okay, so whenever you have an x times e or x times trig, which you're going to do 100% of the time, 
is set u equal to the x and dv either equal to the e or the trig. And what you'll do is you'll take the derivative all the way down to zero, okay, every time. Now, if you come across an e times a trig, you're going to set u equal to the e and dv equal to the trig. And what you're going to do is you're going to take the derivative twice and add the integral over to the other side. I'll show you how to do that when we get there, but this is kind of to, to keep in the back of our mind. Finally, if you have an x times a natural log or an x times an arc trig, the reason I split this up from group 1 is because now I'm going to set my u equal to the ln or the arc trig. My x will be my dv. And these, these are our easiest scenarios. Just take the derivative once, and you'll be good. So with that being said, and now uh, using our chart right here, let's go ahead and actually understand how I did number 1. Here it's an x times an e. So I set my u equal to the x. I set my dv equal to the e, e to the 3x. And I said to take the derivative down to 0. So the derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of 2x is 2. And the derivative of 2 is 0. Then we integrate the right side. I want to integrate this however many times we took the derivative. So the integral of e to the 3x is 1 third e to the 3x. The integral of that is 1 ninth e to the 3x. And the integral of that is 1 over 27 e to the 3x. The last thing I do is I start with the positive in the upper right hand corner, alternate signs all the way down, and once I do that, you multiply down and to the right, and when I get to the bottom we're going to multiply across and put an integral sign, but I'm not going to have to worry about that because 0 times anything is just 0, which is why our final answer, multiply down and to the right, that's going to be 1 third x squared e to the 3x minus 2 over 9x e to the 3x plus 2 over 27 e to the 3x plus e. And that's it. That's it for number one, okay? Let's go ahead and do a couple more. Let's do some more problems from group two and three. That way you can see how that works. So let's take a look here at um, number two. Oops, probably, no, uh, whatever, it's gone. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at e times a sine. With this case, that was in group two, and hopefully you've written those groups down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my u equal to e to the x, and my dv equal to sine x. Now what I told you in this case is you're going to only take the derivative twice. Because technically, you can take the derivative an infinite number of times. So, but in this case, just two times. That's all you got to do. So the derivative of e to the x is, well, e to the x. And the derivative of e to the x is, again, e to the x. Then don't forget you're integrating the right side. The integral of sine, the antiderivative of sine. Hopefully by now we're comfortable with these. That's a negative cosine. And then finally, the integral of a negative cosine is a negative sign. Last thing we're going to do, positive in the upper left hand corner and alternate signs down, so we have positive and negative. Positive, we'll multiply down and to the right, but when I get to the bottom I will have to multiply across and put an integral sign. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rewrite the problem. Okay, I'm just going to rewrite the problem real quick, the integral of e to the x sine x. Okay, so this is equal to, multiply down and to the right, I'll be a negative e to the x cosine x, multiplying down to the right, negative and negative, that's plus e to the x sine x. Now here's the thing, when I get to the bottom, you're going to multiply across the bottom and put an integral sign. So e to the x times a negative sine x is a minus, you know, e to the x sine x. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an integral sign in front of that. So that's what I mean by multiply across the bottom and put an integral sign. But check this cool stuff out. Notice I have a negative integral e times sine. Here I have an integral e times sine. You can literally add this integral over to the other side. And so the integral of e to the x times sine plus the integral of e to the x times sine is 2 times the integral of e to the x times sine. And over here I still have a negative e to the x cosine x, right, plus e to the x sine x, and so now all you got to do 
divide 2 to each side. So your final answer, the integral of e to the x sine x, is simply just 1 half times negative e to the x cosine x plus e to the x sine x. And don't forget, this is still indefinite, so always write plus c. Cool? Nice. Who says it doesn't work every time? Please, give me a break. Okay, number three, last one. So I have x squared times natural log of x. This is in group three because this time I'm going to set my u equal to the natural log, and I'm going to set my dv equal to the x squared. And what I told you all in group three, man, just take the derivative once. The derivative of ln is 1 over x, and the integral, you integrate it however many times you took the derivative, so it's going to be 1 third x cubed. Last thing I do, plus, minus, multiply down and to the right, multiply across, put an integral sign. And so down and to the right, that'll be 1 third x cubed, natural log of x. And multiplying across the bottom, this 1 over x with that x cubed, that'll be a minus. Then I have 1 third x squared, but we're going to put an integral sign. Now that I have that, just integrate that. So your final answer is 1 third x cubed, natural log of x, integrating this, minus 1 ninth x cubed plus c. Seriously, that's it. That's integration of parts, and that, I, that's it. That is it. And so, go through this chart, go through those three steps, and that's how you do integration of parts.